Hope you are getting ready to be encountered by God. We'll go right into today's lesson. Lesson 2. Praying in the Spirit. We will not assume that everyone knows what this is. We will still touch on this topic because this is a vital tool that helps believers to pray long. What is praying in the Spirit? What are the benefits? Don't miss this. How can one be filled? We will make some extras from the book, A Cry from Hell, I Thought I Was Born Again, by O. Tomisin Ajile. Praying with the Spirit, mostly referred to as praying with tongues, is the primary physical evidence that you receive when you are immersed in the Holy Spirit. It is hence a tool through which the Holy Spirit prays with and through us, for us and others according to the will and purpose of God. I will not discuss the benefits of the Holy Spirit since that is not our focus. Let's talk about some of the benefits of praying with the Spirit from the book. I will emphasize number one which says, Praying with tongues helps us to pray in the Spirit. Yes, it is difficult but possible to pray in the Spirit and not pray in tongues. Jesus never did pray in tongues, but he prayed in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit means you are praying the exact will of God and the mind of God saying the right thing at the right time. This is very difficult for the believer to achieve. This is why through the gift of speaking with tongues, available for all believers, the Holy Spirit, who knows God's mind, can join forces with us to pray His will. At the same time, the Spirit also helps us in our weakness, because we don't know how to pray for what we need. But the Spirit intercedes along with our groans that cannot be expressed in words. The one who searches our hearts knows what the Spirit has in mind. The Spirit intercedes for God's people the way God wants him to. Romans 8, 26-27 Number 5. When you pray in tongues, you build up your spiritual muscles and capacity. Who doesn't want that? Number 7 says there is a transmission that goes on from your spiritual treasury to the physical reality when you pray in the Spirit. So you need to know what is going on when you are praying in the Spirit. It's like opening a portal to your abundant spiritual resources so that they can translate into the physical. Who doesn't want that? Be sensitive when you pray. Number 8 says that God speaks to you when you pray with the Spirit. I have practiced this very well. When I want to hear God on a matter, I just spent time praying in the Spirit. That is the end of that matter. Kenneth Egan in his book, Tongues Beyond the Upper Room, had this to say. Between 1950 and 1963, the Lord Jesus himself appeared to me eight times. On two of these occasions, he talked to me for an hour and a half. But all that didn't happen because I wired away the hours doing whatever my flesh wanted me to do. The revelations and the visions came by the Spirit as I waited before God in prayers. Hour after hour, hour after hour, hour after hour, hour after hour, fellowshipping with Him and praying in other tongues. When Kenneth Egan was asked the secret of his success, he answered, I'll tell you what I did. It was a matter of waiting on God and spending hours praying in the Holy Ghost. That's how I have received direction and revelation for every step and every stage of my ministry. Now we know what praying in tongues is and the benefits. Let's talk about how to be immersed in the Holy Spirit. In one of our editions, we have testimonies about three persons who took advantage of this training and were filled with the Holy Spirit. We've been having at least one testimony in each edition since then. You can be filled too with the evidence of speaking with tongues. Be born again, that's number one. And water baptized. Romans 10 verse 9 to 10. Acts 2 verse 38. 
Note that you don't need water baptism before you are baptized in the Holy Spirit. Matthew 3 verse 11 Don't fall prey to unbelief. Water baptism is nonetheless essential for you as a Christian who, like Jesus, wants to fulfill all righteousness. Matthew 3 15 2. Believe without any doubts that God wants you to have him immediately. 1 John 5 verse 14 3. Know that you don't need to be holy in your body and soul completely before you can receive him. His work is to purify you in the body and soul, giving you victory over sin. Believe that he is your inheritance and not even the devil is big enough to prevent you from having him. 5. Know scriptures yourself that tell you about the promises of the Holy Spirit. Tell the Father why you need him and state all the reasons you know sincerely. 7. Ask the Father for the Holy Spirit. Believe you have received him. Luke 11 verse 13. Faith must be the first evidence that you have. Hebrews 11 verse 11. 8. Pray and praise God until you see the physical evidence of speaking with tongues. What has happened in your spirit? Remember, it is you that must speak. The Holy Spirit will not open your mouth for you. While you praise God for what he has done, in known verbal words by faith, your spirit kicks in. And soon enough, your tongues with stammering lips kick in. Kenneth Hagin, in his book, Songs Beyond the Upper Room, shared his experience of receiving the Holy Ghost baptism after praying and asking for him. Praise God, the Holy Spirit will give me utterance and I will speak with tongues and thank you for it. Then I said, Hallelujah! About eight times or ten times, never feeling so dry and dead in all my life. In fact, it seemed like I almost choked on those hallelujahs. But I didn't stop, just because I feel anything. What do feelings have to do with anything? That basically settles it. For those who have been wrongly taught to believe speaking with tongues and the Holy Spirit, baptism is no longer valid today. Please read the scripture and don't cheat yourself. Christianity is personal and not about the denomination. Acts chapter 2 verse 38 to 39. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. The promise is unto you, the present others, and to your children, their children, and to all that are far off. Well, wherever you are, you qualify. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Are you one of the called of God into his family? Are you a child of God? Then you qualify for the gifts. Amen. It doesn't matter whether you are Pentecostal, Orthodox, Methodist, or what have you. The promise is for all. More practical means of receiving the baptism. I received the Holy Ghost baptism on my own. You can also. The following practical steps have helped several persons to receive the Holy Ghost baptism. You can receive yours too. 1. As long as you are born again, you are ready to be baptized. Thus, decide in your hearts that you are ready to get baptized with the evidence of speaking with tongues and nothing will stop you. Be absolutely sure that God is willing to give you and nothing can stop him except you. Read Luke 11 verse 11 to 13 till you believe what he said. 2. Find a solitary place and a solitary time when and where you can pray at the top of your voice and you will not disturb anyone and no one will disturb you. 3. 
at the set time and place, be rest assured and resolute that at that moment and in that place where you stand, you will be baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking with tongues. Read Acts chapter 1 verse 8, then personalize it for yourself until you believe. 5. Read Acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 4. Read verse 4 again. Say to yourself, I will be filled with the Holy Spirit. I will speak with other tongues because the Holy Spirit will give me utterance. Say this many times again and again till you believe it. Note that all that the Holy Spirit will give you is utterance. It is you who will speak. You must not wait for him to open your mouth for you. You must speak out in faith. Soon you will say a short prayer and then immediately after that prayer, you begin to speak with tongues in faith. Note that there are several manifestations of the Holy Ghost baptism. Some feel a burning, some have a twisting tongue or a twisting lip, some fall to the ground. For me, it was a twisting lip and a fall to the ground. Some become dizzy, some feel a breeze, some see visions, some are levitated, some feel nothing. Kenneth Egan felt nothing. But irrespective of what you feel, you must speak. Prayer for Holy Ghost Baptism Father, I am born again. I have given my life to you. Thank you for that gift of salvation. Jesus, you promised that you will send me the Holy Spirit if I ask. So now, Lord, I am asking. Father, Give me the Holy Spirit. Baptize me with the Holy Spirit. I receive the baptism now and I will speak with tongues because the Holy Spirit will give me utterance. Thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, Spirit of truth, fill me now. Holy Spirit, Spirit of the living God, I receive you now. Holy Spirit, Spirit of Jehovah, thank you for coming into me. Thank you for baptizing me. Thank you for giving me your trance. Now I will speak with tongues. Now speak by faith. If you have done this by God's grace, nothing can stop your baptism and manifestation. Note that this is not the only way. It's just a simplified personal way from my own perspective. Receive the Holy Ghost baptism today and if you receive him, and the evidence is not coming or I've left, follow the simple steps too. If you pray this prayer sincerely and follow the directives, you will be baptized, evident to speaking with tongues. We have no doubt about that. You can also go with a prepared heart to meet a minister of God to lay hands on you, to receive the baptism of the Spirit. That is that on how to receive the baptism on your own. If you have received already, you can also learn how to help others to do the same. Let us pray. That will be all for today. Please take that prayer. Take notes that prayer commences on Monday. We will answer the question, why pray long? And take one other very vital lesson. Don't miss it. God bless you richly. Shalom. Shalom.